Hello everybody. I felt like telling you something about a great war that is being waged on European peoples uh, for many thousands of years that I call the Cult of One. And to get a picture of what I mean, just imagine that scene from the movie The Matrix where Mr. Smith, the virus, replicates himself into a million copies of himself uh, but they're all the same. They're the same one. And it is this cult of oneness that uh, has for a long time attacked the European psyche. The cult of one is a religious movement that began in the Middle East some 5,000 years ago or more. Uh, and it is centered around the belief in the oneness of everything. And this surprisingly has many forms, but each is working toward the same event, namely what they call the singularity, when everything is supposed to become one. I'll give you some examples. Um, the Eye of Horus floating over the Pyramid of the Freemasons, that's an example. Um, or the Book of Zohar foretelling the fusion of the divine male with the divine female into a single transgender goat god, that's another. Or even the, the oneness of the Christian Holy Trinity is yet another. This oneness of everything as a belief system has been the root cause of all modern illnesses. Starting with the great monotheisms, the belief in the one God, um, We've seen the rise of the Abrahamic religions, such as Judaism, Christianity, Islam, uh, and with the arrival of this organized religious system, the, the worship of the one son or the one prophet, uh, people came to worship their egos rather than their ancestors. Atheism, in turn, is monotheism with one less God, usually in favor of a, uh, worshiping a scientific formula, the theory of everything. Uh, in Tolkien's Lord of the Ring, for example, uh, there's the one ring that rules them all that must be destroyed in a fire. Uh, it represents the one God that must be destroyed by Satan in order to establish atheism so that the dwarves and the owls and the humans and the orcs can all coexist peacefully. Indeed, the belief in equality is just another version of the cult of one. The christening of Europe then all but successfully anesthetized the polytheistic European soul. Christianity carried forward the Greco-Judean idea of the sovereign individual, freeing people from their ancestral worship. The religions of individualism have made people uh, deeply narcissistic, calculating, rational, mm, selfish, and in constant need of praise and worship in the form of material offerings. And yet, um, the followers of this cult of self-worship, they remain as helpless as a little baby and they can only respond to their incompetence with seething rage. The influence of this cult of one can now be felt in every aspect of our lives. In fact, it has completely changed our reality. Karl Marx dreamed of establishing the definite class, the one working class. Albert Einstein famously fused space and time into space-time, as though the physical world were one giant whole. And Stephen Hawking gave the universe a singular origin, the so-called Big Bang. Psychoanalyst Carl Jung believed the European preference for life among their kin was such a mental disorder that they had to be cured with individualism. And Jordan Peterson, in our time, merely picked up where Jung left off in terms of attempting to destroy the Western social cohesion. The field of philosophy, too, has seen no exemption. Uh, German thinker Martin Heidegger went so far as to combine time and being, Sein und Zeit, into a transcendent oneness, erasing the very distinction between past, present and future, and so forming a gigantic present moment, the eternal now, so doing away with the ancestral past Europeans used to believe in. Modern liberals want to liberate people from their ranks, their families, their gender, classes, races, you name it. They want to create one world without borders, mix everyone together to efface all differences, enslave people under the one world bank, the global economy, and the one open society with only one tune left to dance to, global communism. But today's youngsters dance alone, 
um, knowing no shame, they go to clubs and festivals to jump up and down, randomly flailing their arms and legs around as if, if your ancestors could see your TikTok moves today, they'd think you were all nuts. Our ancestors used to dance together to renew their social bonds. Dances were meant to drum up the spirits of their ancestors to help heal the tribe or perhaps in anticipation of childbirth. Today we are told to pursue a lifestyle of one-night stands, to live in a pod, to eat bugs, to pursue love the way the characters of Sex and the City do, hopping on and off the carousel. But hey, don't call me a whore because I don't take cash, only expensive gifts will do. Likewise, the transgender movement means to establish a definite sex, presumably the female one. And we're told the future is female and men, I guess, will just have to live in jail or die out. Robots will take care of kids born of electric wombs, so women can be free to pursue... Well, what exactly? What are women supposed to do all day if there's nothing left to do? Meaningless peacockery? Flaunting the latest fashion to other women who aren't even looking? Pursuing individualistic careers solely for one's self-adulation, we think the emptiness of our being is a, a track to getting promoted. But have I got a sticker for you? School exams test how well an individual can reproduce the dogmas of the collective. But why are pupils rarely judged as groups? For example, for building a house together. People aren't bricks glued together by society. We aren't supposed to be disconnected nobodies, nor connected somebodies. We are supposed to be living souls. Yet modernity keeps telling us that we're all special, even though boredom consumes us. Vanity simply can never fill the gaping void where our soul used to be. If everyone's special, then no one is. The oneness of everything wants to erase every class distinction. It wants to mix all people with all, so that the definite race, the mixed race, can replace all others. Like Mr. Smith from The Matrix. For the same reason now, climate Marxists are starting forest fires and flooding lands in order to create the definite climate. It should make us tremble with fear, for back when Marxists dreamed of elevating the working classes to establish the one definite class, their nightmare ended in the murder of over 80 million people in Soviet labor camps. Indeed, even democracy is not, and never has been, a native European way. One person, one vote. It's the adagio to divide the people on every matter, so elites can rule democracies per divide et impera, or divide and conquer. They, the followers of this cult of one, call these developments their enlightenment project. They won't stop until they've deconstructed physical reality itself, until the whole thing has collapsed onto and into itself, and all sentient minds have fused into one immutable entity they call a god mind. For this is their one goal, to give birth to their god, their messiahs, by tearing reality apart. Few people even grasp the pervasiveness of this completely alien, un-European and anti-European doctrine that is the oneness of everything. So why do I care? Well, more than a psychologist, it's a philosopher's job to try to understand why people are generally so unhappy. Why are so many people living unfulfilling lives nowadays? The psychologist analyzes the individual and prescribes a therapy, but the philosopher dives deep into the sources of it all into the dark, murky waters of humanity. And we see that mankind has become increasingly individualistic and narcissistic and riding a wave of materialism into the walled enclosures of the cities. Of course, we're unhappy. Today, humanity has been almost completely uprooted, cut off from the soil of its forebears and dropped into residential high-rises that amount to no more than human pigsties. Our ideal of an advanced scientific future amounts to people locking themselves up in spaceships made of glass and steel, forever losing any and all connection to the soil of the earth. We die cocooned in a technocratic dystopia. And soon, our flesh and blood will be synthetically remade in the image of the technocrats who think they're our gods. Our minds replaced with implants, our hearts with pumps and valves, how much longer before we cease to be human at all? Normal people, simply meaning people who get to live fulfilling lives, 
crave community and companionship. We crave belonging and a role to play in some group effort. But as modern individuals, we must dwell alone. As a group, as our own group, no matter how big or small, we become more than the sum of individuals. Rather than having to prove ourselves worthy to an undeserving audience every day anew, we find all of a sudden that we are supported by our kin. We can rise above ourselves and guided by our ancestral spirits, we achieve life's fulfillment through struggle. For we are no longer afraid to go at it alone. As with the flash of an atom bomb, we have awoken to the deception that was the age of enlightenment. The cult of one will have to grow up.